All right, hello YouTube. Today we are going to do a general guide tip video. I'm gonna go through all of the stats in the stat sheet and I'm gonna go through some UI or some uh, interface features that allows you to play this game easier. I'll tell you what the game tells you, but like I know most people don't read. So let's start with I think the most important question. And I feel like I listened to this question so many times. I'll get this out of the way first. What is a follow up attack? A follow-up attack is quite simple if your attack is a follow-up attack the game tells you it's a follow-up attack so for clara the counter attack a counter attack is considered a follow-up attack no way so for march she counter attack and the counter is considered a follow-up attack for Himeko, the game tells you that it's a follow-up attack for herta the game tells you that it's a follow-up attack. And for Yan King, the game tells you that it's a follow-up attack. Seely doesn't count as a follow-up attack. But I can tell you this funny little feature about Seely. This extra turn is stupid. As it says here, it won't expand your remaining turn when taking action. So how this works is, you know the cookie cutter combo between Bronya and Seely? Bronya buff only lasts one turn. However, when Seely gets a kill and get her extra turn, she will still have Bronya's buff because this extra turn doesn't count as a turn. It essentially functions like your ultimate because when you use your ultimate, you skip turns. It's basically a cheat code if you want to maintain buff on your character for longer. Okay, next. Break effect does not affect how fast you break the enemy shield. Okay, if you click this question mark button, break effects increase the damage you do upon weakness break the damage you do on the damage over turn off that weakness break or how far the enemy actions are delayed only all right so what does that mean when you weakness break an enemy they take a huge chunk of damage and they get applied with a status effect right so if you weakness break with physical they get bleed if you get weakness break with fire they get burn if you get weakness break with ice they get frozen if you get weakness break with electro they get shock right so Weakness break only affects the damage over time when you weakness break. All right, so this bar over here, it's called the action order. The number there shows the percentage you are to the next turn. If you reach 0%, you get to take a turn. Some character will have mechanics that allows you to like go above, technically below zero. So you take a turn first priority and using your ultimate will prioritize your turn before anything else, right? Speed as a stat determines how fast you move on this action order itself so the faster your speed the faster you move on this action order so if i were to um, break this guy's shield 929 break damage and his action order got delayed and 432 bleed damage okay i'll try to run break effect this gives me only 10 percent more break so if i were to hit this how much damage would a break do 998 break damage we went from 40 percent break to 50.3 percent break right and now i want to see the dot and the bleed is now 476 okay and it affects how far enemy actions are delayed as well but to get this higher you need a lot of break effect which generally isn't worth it unless you're playing asta weakness break damage is also based on the enemy max health so the higher hp the enemy is the more damage weakness break does Okay? All right, so now we go for how damage works in this game. So, everyone knows about your attack, yes? Your attack is that number. How you do damage is if your skill scales off attack, it's gonna tell you the skill scales off attack. No way. If your skill scales off HP, it's gonna tell you it scales off HP. Unless you wanna build DPS Natasha, then your basic attack scales off HP. But yes, that is the baseline, okay? So now I will be very professional here. So your base damage is going to be equal to your attack times your skill modifier, yes? So for example here, we have 1,400 attack and our skill modifier is 80. So how much damage would it do, chat? It's gonna do a lot of damage. That is true. It's gonna do a lot of damage. Now, there's something more. There's something in this game called damage modifier. So it's one of these like physical damage boosts, ice damage boosts, lightning damage boosts, something like this, which gives you basic and skill damage boosts, right? So now... You put these here, 
and you multiply this by one plus damage bonus. So that's gonna be the base damage formula, okay, chat? And the next step we go is we're gonna go for the big number. If your attack crit, it's going to be the base damage multiply by one plus your crit damage like that yeah does that make sense yet is the math math thing this is the simplified version without taking into account the enemy defense and resistance okay if you have 1000 attack and your skill modifier is 1.1 that's gonna be 1 100 right for your damage bonus if you were to have 48.8 percent physical damage boost and you're using an item like subscribe for more you get 48% more basic attack and skill damage. If you were to use your basic attack and skill, it's gonna be 48.8 plus 48, right? 1 100 times 1 plus 0 0.968, okay? Are we catching up here? <laughs> Color them code? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> They're colored now. Are we going? So now that is going to be your base damage, right? And if you want this to be crit, it's going to be this number times one plus your crit damage, right? I have 64.5, okay? Which means that's going to be your final damage, okay? This is assuming the enemy defense and resistance are zero. Obviously, they'll take less damage if they have defense and shit, right? And they will. So this is like the baseline on how you calculate the damage formula, okay? Essentially, the damage formula of this game is the same with the damage formula in Genshin, okay? The only only difference is we get less stats here than in Genshin. Because this is how the formula work, attack is going to be the least important stat. You get a lot of attack bonus randomly anyways. It's generally not worth stacking super high attack. You want to stack damage bonus or crit damage if you crit, right? Obviously, for crit damage, you need crit rate as well, yeah? In Genshin Impact, the maximum crit rate and crit damage roll per relic is 3.9 crit rate and 7.8 crit damage per roll. In Honkai Star Rail, it is 2.9 crit rate and 5.8 crit damage maximum per roll, which means the average of Star Rail crit rate crit damage is going to be lower. So is the damage bonus. Damage bonus is 46.6 versus 38.8, right? I don't think Mihoyo needed to make a new damage formula, okay? The other one works, it's fine. Generally, if you are an attack scaler, you would want 120% of the base attack number. For crit rate and crit damage, you want them to be in a 1-2 ratio, which I'm not really doing here. So for example, if I have 60 crit rate, I should have 120 crit damage. And damage bonus, get as much as you can. That is going to be the basics of it. In Genshin, crit damage falls off at around 180. But since we get less stats in Star Rail, crit damage should fall off at around 150. In Genshin, damage bonus falls off at 150 but in this game it should fall off at 130 percent damage bonus is equal to like every single damage bonus you accumulate so if you were to have physical damage bonus and like an all damage bonus and a normal attack damage bonus you add them all together when you're doing normal attack okay the reason why number fall off at a certain percentage doesn't mean they fall off completely it depends on how rolling stats on your gear work you only have so many stats you can roll on your gear and if you roll too much of a single stat you hit diminishing return because you can improve your damage by investing to another stat, you know? Like, if you stack too much attack, it doesn't do more damage than a well-balanced build. Opportunity cost is a better word for it. Okay, the damage you do is also based on the enemy level. But this isn't accurate because we have 10 less levels than in Genshin. Unless it really is the same, but the damage you do is affected by your level versus the enemy level. I hope that explains damage, okay? Okay, so energy is quite an easy one to explain. If you have the baseline energy regeneration rate of 100% on average for every character, it's going to cost you 3 to 4 actions or 3 to 4 turns to get your ultimate back. So for an energy cost of 120, that's roughly 3 to 4 turns. For Natasha, she gets it really quick because her cost is only 90. Uh, how much is Celie? Celie is pretty popular. Celie is 120. So on average, 3 to 4 turns, okay? You get energy depending on what you do. 
So your basic attack will generate 20 energy. Your skill will generate 30 energy. Getting a kill on an enemy will generate 10 energy and getting hit will generate 8 energy. So once again, basic attack is 20 energy, skill is 30, slaying an enemy is 10 energy, and getting hit is 8. So energy regeneration rate is the reason that makes some character works very well endgame. If you have Japart, Japart ult only costs 100 energy, but Japart also has the slowest speed in the game, right? Of 92, right? Or is it Clara? I lied, it's Clara. So Japart is the second slowest unit in the game, right? Japart has a higher chance of being attacked by enemies, right? So you want to get hit a lot so you get your ult back quicker. So you can shield more often. Every time you get hit, you get 8 energy back. If you have higher energy regeneration rate, you get more energy back when you get hit, right? Japart feels weak early game. It's not he isn't fast enough and he isn't generating enough energy to get his ultimate back. But when he can, he'll be very strong. Bronya is also a character that becomes ridiculously strong once you have good energy regeneration rate. That is why for Pranya Light Cone, give you bonus energy regeneration. And that's energy regeneration rate, okay? So next, we are going to explain effect hit rate versus effect resistance, okay? Effect hit rate increases the chance of applying debuff to the target. A higher effect hit rate will result in a higher chance of applying debuff. Resistance. Increase the resistance against debuff. The higher the effect resistance will result in higher chance of resisting the debuff. Okay? Base chance is the base chance to apply a debuff. The final probability is affected by the attacker's effect hit rate and the enemy's target resistance. Okay, so for example, if you are a sample and you have a 65% base chance to apply a debuff and the enemy were to have 70% resistance, and you have a 50% effectiveness stat, the chance of you applying the debuff would be 45%, okay? But if you were to have a 100% and the enemy has 50 resistance, the chance of you applying the debuff would be 115%, right? Most enemies later on will be very, very resistant to debuff. They have up to like 80 or 100% resistance, namely Cocolia having ridiculously high resistance to ice and freeze. So you can freeze her if you really try hard, but it's not consistent, something like that, okay? But yeah, that is how effectiveness and effect resistance work. So for the case of Sample, he applies damage over time, right? DLT stands for damage over time, or I guess in this case, damage over turn, I guess. Damage over time cannot crit. Uh, I guess the other stats we have is healing bonus. Healing bonus, if you have 10% healing bonus, you heal 10% more. If you have 30% incoming healing, you get healed for 30% more. That would mark the end of this general tips video, all right? Yeah, this is a very simple every stat explained video, yeah? Did I miss something? If I miss something, I don't care. This is a video game. Why are you guys looking at math video, huh? Big numbers make brain happy. Just go for big damage number. All right, that is enough. Goodbye.